This WBEZ podcast is supported by the Goose Island Beer Company and their 312 Urban Wheat Ale. Goose Island is working to support and amplify Chicago's pizza places all year long. Find out participating locations and specials at gooseisland.com slash 312 pizza. The Goose Island Beer Company, Chicago's beer. This WBEZ podcast is supported by BMO Harris Bank. Black and Latinx-owned small businesses play a big role in local communities, and BMO Harris is proud to offer them support. BMO for Black and Latinx Businesses Empowering Small Business offers additional access to funds, educational resources, and networking for Black and Latinx business owners. When your bank invests in your community, that's the BMO effect. More at bmoharris.com slash black and Latinx. I'm Sasha Ann Simons, and this is Reset. President Biden is in New York and New Jersey today, touring the flood damage caused by Hurricane Ida. At least 50 people in the Northeast have died in the aftermath of the storm. Meanwhile, in Louisiana, electrical power is slowly returning. But as residents deal with the damage, the state is also trying to manage hundreds of oil and chemical spills caused by Ida. Stronger hurricanes, larger wildfires, and more extreme weather are becoming the norm due to climate change. So how prepared is the Chicago region? Joining us now to discuss is Angela Tovar. She's the chief sustainability officer for the city of Chicago. And Kevin Burns, the mayor of West Suburban Geneva. He also serves as environment committee chairman of the Metropolitan Mayor's Caucus. Angela, I'll come to you first. How is climate change impacting us here in the Chicago region? You know, we are so worried about climate change. And I think that um, what we saw most recently in New York and, you know, the catastrophic damage that happened in the Gulf is a tragic reminder that the climate crisis is already here, right? We have been warned so many times by climate scientists that there will be an increase in the Earth's temperature that will lead to this type of disaster unless action is taken urgently, right? Mm -hmm. And so we are incredibly concerned about more frequent and more severe storms. And, you know, the partnership with uh, Mayor Burns here and others is so critical. We need leaders at the city, state, and federal level to be thinking about how we act urgently to address this crisis. Mayor Burns, you're the mayor of the far west suburb of Geneva. June's tornado was the worst on record for the western suburb of Naperville. What are your top extreme weather concerns? Our top concerns are, and quite frankly always have been, either heat or excessive flooding. And we've recognized that over not only the last decade, but prior to as well. So those are our chief concerns, and those are the issues that we try to address head on. So how do we act? How is Chicago preparing for more extreme weather? Right. So I think that there are a number of ways that we are preparing. First and foremost, we have to think about this in two different buckets, right? There is the adaptation question. And so that means how do we anticipate the impacts of climate change now and in the future and to think about what necessary actions we need to minimize any damage and to really ensure the future of our our city right Uh, the resilience of our city and then secondly we have to think about mitigation right so how can we move rapidly to address the, the highest sources of emissions and that's typically within our building and transportation sectors And the answer is that we're doing a little bit of both. We are increasing our investments in infrastructure in the city of Chicago, advancing new green infrastructure projects to think about absorbing stormwater, um, thinking about how we plant additional trees to reduce the impacts of urban heat island effect and to, again, absorb stormwater. Um, We're focused on um, shoreline uh, restoration to ensure that we're minimizing flood there. And then on the mitigation level, uh, we've been working on a robust building decarbonization strategy to think about how we can reduce um, emissions in our building sector and to do that equitably, right, to ensure that everyone around the city can see the benefits of that. And we're also thinking about the same in transportation, right? So how do we rapidly advance the electrification of our buses? How can we provide low carbon mobility options for the city of Chicago? Um, And how do we create the streetscapes necessary to encourage other methods of transportation beyond just car use? Of the 13 New Yorkers who drowned, Angela, 11 were living in illegally converted basement apartments uh, that may not have been up to code. 
and Chicagoans are used to basement flooding. So should we be worried that flooding could get worse here? Well, I do want to remind people that the situation in New York City was unique, given that this was a residual storm, right, that, that is, was part of Ida. Um, and that was a storm that dumped about seven inches of rain on New York City um, after the hurricane, the Category 4 hurricane, made its way up the Atlantic. Um, so I do not anticipate that we will see that level of storm in the Chicago area, um, most of, um, and as Mayor Burns mentioned, you know, we are worried about lake level rise. We are extremely worried about extreme heat as well, right? That is usually the leading cause of weather related deaths in the US. Um, and then of course, air quality, right? We, we have experienced, um, you know, a number of poor air quality days um, and that's usually related to ground level ozone. So there are a number of climate-related issues that we are concerned about. Of course, basement flooding is one of those. Um, and I do want to note, you know, one thing that we need to recognize is that this is um, that low-income communities and communities of color are disproportionately burdened by a lot of these climate um, impacts. Mm -hmm. um, and basement flooding is one of those, right? Um, and the Center for Neighborhood Technology um, did put out a report showing um, how those impacted, how basement flooding impacted communities of color. So that's one thing that we will have to factor in account. I will say that, um, you know, the Department of Water Management has invested about $875 million in new sewer construction in the last six years, um, and 145 miles of sewer lines were constructed in that process. Um, they also um, support the work of CDOT in ensuring that um, the design improvements that CDOT makes help mitigate backflow and overflow issues in our sewer systems. And then more recently, um, DWM is taking on a um, new project where they are looking at low-lying areas of the city to think about how to mitigate sewer backup and um, overflows. So this is anticipated to directly target the needs of residents and businesses mm -hmm. that are concerned about um, basement flooding. Mayor Burns, Angela brings up a really great point. Uh, what is Illinois doing about how climate change impacts the most vulnerable among us? Well, let me echo everything uh, my friend Angela just said. And uh, I also need to compliment her as well for participating in what many of you know was just a seven weeks ago we launched the very first climate action plan for the Chicago region. And what Angela said needs to be reinforced. This climate plan is centered in equity with the well-being of people at its core. And the plan articulates climate adaptation goals, persistent, equitable climate adaptation. And of course, we talk about mitigation as well. I'd be remiss if I didn't also mention that we partnered with our friends, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, or NOAA, to design our regional adaptation plan using the U.S. Climate Resilience Toolkit, specific adaptation objectives with respect to resiliency. Uh, we are fooling ourselves if we don't acknowledge and act accordingly that the equitable component of any climate action plan must be central, and ours is. Um, sticking with you, Mayor Burns, you head up the Environment Committee for the Metropolitan mm -hmm. Mayor's Caucus. It includes 275 local cities, towns, and villages. Now, in July, the caucus released its 2021 action plan for the Chicago region, and it calls for reducing greenhouse gas emissions by at least 80% by 2050. Correct. What are some of the chief recommendations there? Well, uh, with respect to adaptation, uh, let, me, let me just rattle those off very quickly. Uh, first and foremost is to engage and educate the communities we serve about climate resilience and adaptation. Incorporate equity and inclusion into all our climate adaptation efforts. Collaborate and build capacity for a more resilient community. Enact plans that Andrea talked about and policies focused on adaptation and resilience. And of course, adapt operations and investments for future climate conditions. And we can talk all day long about building more sewers and building wider lines and what have you. But the reality is we have to do a lot of things in order to achieve what we all know to be uh, more fierce, more frequent storms and weather conditions that are going to tax all of that which we have built over the last 100 years. So moving forward, these investments are critical, as Andrea mentioned. 
Angela, why is it so important uh, for us to address climate change as a whole region? Um, the regional approach is so important here because, you know, climate change isn't limited by boundaries, right? This is a regional issue. Um, we know that what impacts the city of Chicago may be the same for Geneva or our surrounding, um, you know, areas in the Chicagoland region. And so we really have to come together to think about how we protect our people. And again, just want to stress this, you know, in particular, our low income communities and our communities of color. Um, we can come together as a region um, to bring together our assets and to think regionally and strategically about how to advance infrastructure projects, how to think about nature-based solutions, and to also think about those equitable co-benefits um, so that our communities can thrive. What power, Mayor, do the smaller towns and villages have when it comes to this climate change fight? They have more power than I think we ever imagined. And I, I wanna, again, comment on what Angela said. The reality is this, I believe that true climate action will begin at the municipal level. And we will see positive actions taken because communities of every size will be doing things that not only improve their little corner of the world, but as Angela referenced, regionally making those improvements because we are so interconnected. Um, I, I get a kick out of when people talk about, quote, Western suburban Geneva. But the reality is I'm 30 miles away from the state's largest city, Chicago, and we are so interconnected that what Chicago does affects us, what we and other communities like Geneva do affects Chicago, affects Northeastern Illinois, affects the multi-state region, and so on. So when communities of a smaller size say, well, gee, what can I do? I would say this, turn to the Mayor's Caucus website, mayorscaucus.org, and Examine the climate action plan that's been put together. It is specifically designed for communities of every size to take positive steps on improving not only their environment, but the regional environment. And together, I truly believe, and I'm looking forward to experiencing this, that we'll make huge strides toward a more equitable, resilient, and secure future. So your bullet point list, Angela, on what our region can do to better prepare for this? Sure. Our, <laughs> the, the bullet point list for me is for us to come together to think about how we transition away from a fossil fuel economy to more renewable sources of energy. How do we come together to um, reduce our greenhouse gas emissions in an equitable way? Um, again, how do we drive those equitable co benefits that our communities need? Um, how do we think about more innovative approaches to climate adaptation so that we can combat the worsening effects of climate change? And I would say, how do we drive those nature-based solutions that we know are so critical here, right? We mm -hmm have the opportunity to really restore our ecosystems here. Um, we can drive um, integrative approaches that um, honor nature-based solutions. And those, of course, bring not only beautification, but a whole slew of benefits to our ecosystems here. And we want to see more of that. That is Angela Tovar, Chief Sustainability Officer for the City of Chicago, and Kevin Burns, Mayor of West Suburban Geneva, also Chairman of the Environment Committee for the Metropolitan Mayor's Caucus. Thank you both. And that's today's Reset. For more of our interviews, subscribe to this podcast and give us a rating and review. It really helps other people find us. I'm Sasha Ann Simons. Thanks for joining us, and we'll meet again soon.